So we have seen in the previous video that we can have uh, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, but that we could also have a slant line that is an asymptote for a function. Let's look for example at this situation where the red line is an asymptote for the function f of x. Because the red line is neither horizontal nor vertical, it has a slope a and this slope is non-zero. Of course the case where it's an horizontal or vertical line uh, are cases that we've already taken care of in the previous video. So let's fix an x and look at the point corresponding point on the line then it has second coordinate ax plus b because the equation of the line is y equal ax plus b and the corresponding point on the graph of the function and it has second coordinate f of x. Now if I look at the behavior when x grows you see that ax plus b and f of x get closer and closer together. In other words the limit at infinity of the difference between f of x and ax plus b is zero. So this is what defines a slant asymptote. In other words, a line of equation y equal ax plus b is an asymptote for f if the limit at infinity is a positive or negative infinity of the difference between f of x and ax plus b is zero. The case we're going to focus on is a case where f of x is a rational function, in other words, a quotient of two polynomials. In this case, finding the equation of the slant asymptote is going to be about long division. Let's take a look why. Let p and q be two polynomials, so this is the kind of situation we're looking at. The function we're looking at is a quotient of two polynomials, p and q. If we do the long division of p by q, we are going to get something of the form tx plus r of x over q of x, where t and r are also polynomial, and the degree of the remainder r is strictly less than the degree of the divisor q. And this polynomial t of x, a quotient, has degree, degree of p minus degree of q. And we're interested in the case where this is, in fact, a linear function. That is going to correspond to the case where the degree of p, the degree of the top, is one more than the degree of q, one more than the degree of the bottom. Then the degree of t is going to be 1. In other words, t is a linear function of the form ax plus b. And doing the long division is going to give us p over q is ax plus b plus r over q, where the degree of r is less than the degree of q. If I look now at the difference between p over q and ax plus b, and look at the limit when x goes to infinity, it is the limit of r over q. But the degree of r is strictly less than the degree of q, and we already have seen that in this situation, the limit of the quotient is zero because we have higher degree at the bottom. Therefore, the line y equal ax plus b is an asymptote for p over q. So this ax plus b that gives us the slant asymptote is what we obtain as a quotient in the long division. Before we apply that to examples to find slant asymptotes, let's go over an example of long division where the degree of t is going to be more than 1, just to review the algorithm for long division. Let's say we want to divide 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus x squared plus 5 by x squared plus 4. We're going to place top and bottom this way. And we start by looking at the term of highest degree in the top, that's 2x to the fifth. And we're going to divide it by the term of highest degree at the bottom. So we get 2x to the fifth divided by x squared, 
that's 2x cubed. Then we multiply 2x cubed, not just by x squared, but by the whole divisor, so by x squared plus 4. What we obtain is 2x to the fifth plus 8x cubed. We're going to subtract this new expression to the original function 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus x squared plus 5. So I get 2x to the fifth minus 2x to the fifth, so there is no x to the fifth left. Then I have 3x to the fourth minus 0x to the fourth, so 3x to the fourth is going to remain. I have 0x cubed minus 8x cubed, I get negative 8x cubed. Then negative x squared minus 0x squared, still negative x squared. And 5 minus 0, still 5. So this is what I obtain if I subtract 2x to the fifth plus 8x cubed to what I have. At this stage, I have to check the degrees. What I have obtained is of degree 4, and the divisor is of degree 2. As long as I don't get something that is of degree less than the divisor, I keep going. What I mean by keep going is that I'm going to iterate the algorithm I have just described, but 3x to the fourth minus 8x cubed minus x squared plus 5 is going to play the role of 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus x squared plus 5. In other words, now I look at the term of highest degree in this expression, look at the term of highest degree in the divisor, and I divide 3x to the fourth by x squared, and I get 3x squared. Again, I multiply 3x squared by x squared plus 4, and write out the result underneath. And again, I subtract this new expression to 3x to the fourth minus 8x cubed minus x squared plus 5. So the x to the fourth cancel, then I have negative 8x cubed minus 0x cubed, so no change for the x cubed. Then I have negative x squared minus 12x squared negative 13x squared and 5 minus 0. So this is what I obtain. Again, I check the degrees. I did not get something that is of degree less than the divisor, so I iterate again. I look at the term of highest degree, compare with the term of highest degree in the divisor, and divide. So I get negative 8x cubed divided by x squared, negative 8x. I multiply that by x squared plus 4, and obtain negative 8. 8x cubed minus 32x. Again, I subtract this expression to the previous one. The terms in x cubed cancel out, that's how we pick this negative 8x. Then I have negative 13x squared minus 0x squared. That's going to give me negative 13x squared. 0x minus negative 32x. So I subtract negative 32x, I get positive 32x and then 5 minus 0. So this is what I obtain. Once more I check on the degrees and still I do not have a degree that is less than the degree of the divisor, so I iterate again. I divide negative 13 x squared by x squared and I get negative 13. Multiply negative 13 by x squared plus 4 and I obtain negative 13x squared minus 52. Again, I subtract this expression to the previous one. The x squares cancel out. I get 32x minus 0, that's 32x, and then 5 minus negative 52. So I subtract negative 52. So I get 5 plus 52, 57. Now, I have something that is of degree less than the degree of the divisor, and therefore I am done. This expression here, 32x plus 57, is my remainder, r of x, in the abstract expression on the top. On the other end, what I have at the top, this 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 13, is a quotient that was called t of x in the abstract expression. In other words, 
My fraction can be rewritten as 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 13 plus the remainder 32x plus 57 divided by the divisor x squared plus 4. Let's look at an application for finding asymptotes now. I consider the function 2x squared minus 5x minus 2 divided by x minus 3. And I'm looking for the asymptotes. Let's start with the vertical asymptotes. We know that they can only occur at the zeros of the denominator. In this case, there's only one, x equals 3. I have to check that I have an infinite limit when x is approaching 3. At 3, the top is 3 squared, that's 9, multiplied by 2, 18, minus 15 minus 2, so that's 1. I get a non-zero value at the top, and the bottom is approaching 0 when x is approaching 3. Therefore, at 3, I will find an infinite limit. In other words, x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. The degree of the top is higher than the degree of the bottom, and therefore the limit of f when x goes to infinity is infinite. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. On the other hand, the degree of the top is higher than the degree of the bottom by exactly 1. That is exactly the situation in which we are going to have a slant asymptote. To find it, we use long division. So, we look at the terms of highest degree. We have 2x squared that we divide by x, we get 2x. We multiply 2x by x minus 3. I obtain 2x squared minus 6x, and I subtract this expression to the previous one. The x squared cancel out, and for the x I have minus 5x minus negative 6x, so that is plus 6x, and therefore I get x minus 2. x minus 2 is not of degree less than the divisor. It's of, of the same degree, which is 1. So I divide x by x, of course I get 1, and multiply 1 by x minus 3, which gives me x minus 3, and I subtract this expression to the previous one. The x's disappear, and for the constant term I have negative 2 minus negative 3, that's negative 2 plus 3, in other words, 1. 1 is of degree less than x minus 3, and therefore I am done. As a result, the equation of the slant asymptote is y equal 2x plus 1. We have seen that the quotient is going to give us the equation of the asymptote. In terms of the function f, it means that the function f can be rewritten as 2x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 3. One last remark about equations of asymptotes. Asymptotes are lines, therefore if you're giving asymptotes you should give it under the format of an equation of line. For instance, x equals 3 is an asymptote. But if you were giving just 3, this is not an asymptote. A number is not an equation of line. So the x equal a constant is essential to give the answer, the equation of the asymptote. Similarly, 2x plus 1 is not the equation of the asymptote. y equal 2x plus 1 is the equation of the line. Now it's time for you to try to find asymptotes for various functions, and this is something you can do by doing the homework on my math lab.